new, 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 new. You've been doing that for a while. I'm gonna. We gotta do a thing with that's actually the. It's the theme is gonna be just me going. Yeah, new, new, new. Okay, so I got a video. Okay. Um, we have, uh, you know, a fun, we, you know, it's like, how many NeoPixels can you carry? Well, all of them, because they're all oh. really cool. Um, trust me, there's a lot that we don't carry, uh, but these I really liked. So these are particularly great for wearables. These are super skinny NeoPixels. So if you've seen uh, the mini NeoPixels that we've had on the Feather NeoPixel wing, um, these are much thinner than normal NeoPixel strips. Um, instead of using five by five millimeter neopixels or 3.5 by 3.5 neopixels, they're pretty much the same brightness. I didn't notice a significantly less bright effect. You still have the same code, they're code compatible. They're just much smaller. And so the strips of LEDs are also much thinner. And we have them in, um, this is 30 LED per meter. Yeah, uh, and, I, then and I'll we, show the videos if you want to just skip to them. Yeah, and then this is a 60 LED per meter. There's also one 44 LED per meter, but it's not that much thinner because, like, the, the, to get the density, the um, the uh, the capacitor makes it a little thicker. So I'm not sure if I'm going to carry the 144s, but the 60s LEDs are much thinner, and I'll show them on the overhead as well. Uh, and then can you go to uh, the next photo just yeah. so I can show? Yeah. Well, that. I was going to, and then this is the other. That's one. the same. Yeah, yeah, it's just black flex versus white flex. Yeah. Same same basic so thing. There's the white flex. So then flex. you can see, yeah, it's a it's a lot thinner. Um, compared to the normal NeoPixels. So this is really good um, for wearables. I think if you want a really slim effects or if you want to fit yeah, it into, uh, yeah, some enclosure that's extra small. So this is the skinny NeoPixel and this is normal NeoPixel. So you can yeah. really see it's about half the thickness, uh, half the width. So um, grabbing my calipers and I'm measuring, you know, what is the flex PCB inside of the um, Yeah, those sheathing. are really skinny. It's, it's five millimeters, and then this one is about 10 millimeters. So it's about half the thickness because, um, you know, most of the actually also focus on being, like these could be thinner too, but they're like, oh, I'm just gonna stick with 10 millimeter. But for these, they really are just about as uh, wide as the LEDs themselves. So only a little bit more, you know, basically five millimeters, only a little bit wider than the 3.5. Uses the same power, same protocol and everything, but just skinny. They're actually basically about the same price too. So if you want to, um, I, for this is perfect for like, you know, I was thinking of doing a jacket with LEDs in it. Yeah. So this is way better. I mean, half the thickness, basically you get the same density of pixels, but you have much more freedom and flexibility. If you're making like the LED wig, um, these will be a lot lighter as well. And then remember they have a, a weatherproof sheet thing, but you can cut that off and then just strip, strip it off and then just have the raw LED if you want to have maximum thinness. They're also a little thinner in this direction, but I don't remember the exact number. I think it's just like maybe a 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters thinner, but but they're skinny. I like that. It's cute. Yeah. A little okay. tougher to solder to, but yeah, whatever. Okay. And um, like I said, we have uh, all these videos that uh, yeah, show lovely what they're doing. Yeah, lovely videos. The different densities. 30 and 60 LED per meter, so sweet. And it's hard to tell, but there's the black ones and the white ones. Yeah, you, it's, it's, yeah. Basically, we just have both types, and, yeah. and okay. basically, people want half of one, half of the other, yeah. so we just carry both. Okay. Next up. Okay, this is a feather accessory. I just love having a feather accessory every week, and this is this week's feather accessory. Um, this is a terminal block wing. So um, this is kind of like an underwing. It has prototyping area, but um, more importantly, it has terminal blocks for everything. And so you, it comes as a kit, you solder it together, and when you're done, you basically can plug in your feather, and then you have two big screw terminal strips on either side that break out all of the pins, and there's also an on-off switch, which I'll demo. And it's just like really handy. I, people just love this stuff for wiring fast. Um, we either have permanent or temporary connections, you can do either. Um, if, you're, if you have an installation and you want to just like have wires going to a motor controller or to something else, and, and size isn't important, you don't mind it a little bit bigger, this is great. You get a little bit of prototyping area, all the terminal blocks, um, ex extra power and ground connections, and then an on-off switch. So I thought I'd show this on the overhead. Okay. Okay, so, oh. Oh, we lost overhead. Yeah, you want to plug okay. in the plug? Yeah. Let's see what you can do. I think we lost, we lost some overhead. That's okay. Only right when you went over to it, which is yeah, kind of fascinating. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, well, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Yeah, can you do it again? Oh, yeah. Okay. How many other things do you have on the overhead today? This is it. This is it. 
Yeah, of, we have know, the pie vest. The so. pie, yeah, if we, can, if we can do it. But we also have really mm. good photos of the pie. Yeah. All right. Well, if you can um, talk about it a little bit more while I do a couple of things here. Oh, sure. Um, uh, so it works with all of our feathers. So the M0, 32 U4, um, uh, the blue fruits, whatever. Um, I just have a photo of it with the huzzah. The only one that it won't work so well with is the Fona feather. So if you have the Fona feather, the reason why it won't work so great is the Fona module itself runs off of the battery um, rather than the 3.3 volts. So you just can't use an on off switch, like it won't actually work. Um, it's okay if we don't have a photo by the way. Unplug, unplug, replug. Mm, it's not quite bright tonight. Uh, oh well, well that's okay, whatever. Um, I mean, it's pretty intuitive, like what's going on here. Okay, wanna try? Yeah, I'll do it again. Okay, okay. Don't uh, don't jinx it. Yeah. So this is um, so this is it. I just have the the huzzah feather plugged into it. So yeah, you have terminal blocks, uh, and then you have headers to plug in. You can solder it directly in, but this way you have um, space for like the battery connector. And I just have it with um, uh, an LED connected. So this is um, the screw terminals. They're pretty easy to use. You just use any um, uh, Phillips head or flat head mini screwdriver and then you can connect and disconnect stuff so like wires and components you can use probably like i think like 16 to 30 gauge wire something like that you, you know pretty much the most common wires that you'll need and then um so you can you know you basically just plug into usb on your feather as normal and then um you can turn it on and off with this switch. So I wasn't going to add the switch, but I was like, ah, you know what? That might be handy to actually have a mechanical switch on there. So it cuts power on and off to the feather. So it can be handy if you're if you're prototyping yeah. and you want to power cycle um, the whole setup. So that's it. I mean, and the terminal box is nice. It's just like it's really nice. I mean, like it would, this is one of the things that's like the benefit of having um, the feather standard yeah. because it's. All of the feathers have the same pinouts. I don't have to worry about like, oh, like I have to make one of these for the, the, the Bluetooth one and one for the phone and one for the ethernet and one for the Wi-Fi. All of them are completely compatible. It's completely like use whichever one you want. They will all fit. And they all have the same core of pinouts and then the rest of the pins aren't, aren't labeled. You'll have to just look those up. Okay. And um, getting to um, kind of the star of the show besides you tonight is the Pi. The Pi 3. three. So, wow, Pi 3's here. Um, we have a few photos of the Pi 3. And, uh, you know, this is the Internet of Things Pi, is what I'm yeah, going to say. Yeah, this is the Internet of Things Pi. So, the Pi 3, I just got my hands on one like two hours ago. So, like, really, yeah, all I did was here, like. We'll, we'll do a live unboxing. I like, yeah. yeah. Here we go. So, uh, this. Un unbox it. So, yeah, yeah. well, I, it was, okay, it was in this, and then I took it out. Um, so, this is the, the Pi 3, and it comes with a much thinner compliance thing and they just they, they figured out a way to print it all you yeah. know on one piece of paper other than a booklet so it's kind of nice um, so the Pi 3 is uh, it looks just like the Pi 2 but it has a BCM 2837 it's an ARM Cortex uh, V8 it's a 64-bit processor but like all the ARM Cortex is backward compatible so you can run code that's compiled for the V7 on this. So if Pi2 code or B plus code that's compiled on Pi2 or B plus, you can still run it on this processor. You do need a new kernel because it has like firmware to boot it up. But uh, if you have the latest noobs, the noob, latest noobs works. I've noticed that the Raspbian that was released a couple days ago didn't work. Uh, they're probably gonna update that in the next couple days. Um, so just hold off on that or just use noobs. Uh, other things that changed is the SD card is no longer push-push. It's a now uh, push-pull, which is actually kind of nice because I kept having these fly out and um, they, they, you'd get bumped them and it would, it would fly out, I didn't like yeah. that. Uh, still has one gig of RAM on the bottom, still has four USB ports, still has Ethernet 10100, still has the LAN 90, SMC, LAN 9514 from SMC, so it's a, it's a USB hub and Ethernet, which is um, lovely. Um, still has HDMI, camera, and display. Uh, has a slightly better power supply, apparently. I, don't, I haven't looked at what the chip is, but the power supply yeah. can now do 2.5 amps. We're going to take one home, and we have this power thing that K-Town... Mm, power monitor. Yeah, so it's called power monitor, and we're going to run it through it. Yeah, I want to measure yeah. the actual power draw and, and, like, during boot and stuff, which I did with the Pi 2 and the Pi 0, so I'm going to do that with the, the Pi 3. 
Um, note that although there's warnings about like, oh, you need 2.5 amps of current, that's only if you have like a ton of stuff plugged in, like external hard disk and like Ethernet's running at full blast, your door, everything, and like there's all these accessories um, and like you're powering a display off of it or something. As is, it only uses about 700 milliamps. So as long as you're using a power supply, if, you, if you're really like, I just want to run this, you know, minimally, if, as long as you have a, a one to two amp power supply, you're good to go. The, the power supplies we have in the store um, work great. We're going to work on maybe getting a revision to those to, to bump it up to 2.4, 2.5 amps. Yeah. It's just, just a warning because there's some And the big things are uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah. And those are the big things. I didn't, I didn't get to that yet. I know. So over here, so the really big change, other than, of course, the processor is 50% 50 50 faster. It's a 1.2 gigahertz, 64-bit processor, and it's a, it's a um, newer core. It's a V8 core. Um, is um, Over here, there's a new antenna. This used to be LEDs. I'll zoom in. Oh, can you zoom in a little bit, maybe? And yeah, I can, I can zoom can in. I can point to this thing. We'll yeah, have, that's great. We'll have the other hover cams. Yeah, so we're, it's all way. sorts of stuff going on. Way. So this little white thing here is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And if you flip on the back, there's a chip here. And this is a wicked BCM 43343 something. I don't remember the exact part number. Wicked chipset. And um, it is a... Uh, Again, I haven't super investigated, but it, I, it's at least a dual band. It could be triple band uh, device, band uh, functionality. Uh, it can do Bluetooth low energy. It can definitely do Wi-Fi because I booted up and I, I associated with the Wi-Fi and, and loaded up Adafruit. And I believe it also has Bluetooth Classic because um, Matt Richardson posted a v video of it doing audio, and, and I didn't completely I watch the whole video. But I, I, can, I think it can do Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth low energy, and Wi-Fi. I think the Bluetooth support is still in progress, but Wi-Fi is definitely support out of the box. Um, so that's really cool. And it uses SDIO, so you don't lose a USB port or an SPI port for it. It's, it's basically built in. Another neat thing is apparently they're going to be working on an A-plus version of this. So there'll be um, an A-plus, which is really great for Internet of Things because it'll be lower power, um, but still have a lot of functionality. Like, it won't have all the USB ports and Ethernet. It'll be smaller, but it'll be like built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that good stuff. So we got a small shipment. We are sold out of that small shipment so far. We're going to get more tomorrow. We're going to be constantly putting them in. We are not hoarding them. Trust me, the moment we get them in the store, we put them in the store and notify as many people as we can. Um, we also have to ship them out. So uh, please be patient. It's, this happens every time there's a new Raspberry Pi. Don't worry. They're, we've been assured that they're going to be plenty. You will get one. Uh, just may take a couple days, so please be patient. Really, we we are not doing anything to. Yeah. We're not like burning them. I don't. I don't you, know. You know what? What's really neat is um, there's a lot of people that <coughs> follow along there in the Adafruit community. They participate in the chats and everything, and they see us here, and they see that we have uh, Pi Zeros, and we uh, ran out, and then we did a contest with Hackaday, and they saw that that was a way that we can get some free Pi Zeros, and when they come in, we have. Um, Pi Zeros, and then we also have packs for the people who want packs. And uh, we do the best we can uh, with big companies, giant companies that sell this stuff. You never know. Like, it's actually us. Like, when, when the pies are gone, you can see the stack. Like, we'll have, you know, we're in the Adafruit factory. There, yeah. there is no other thing. Um, these came in today, and they shipped today. That's how fast it went. So, anyways, um, it's, uh, it's neat. Yeah. It's cool. The $35 supercomputer. Um, so that's the that, that's the Pi 3 itself. Um, yep. There is something else. This is mine. I only have one for yeah. myself. I usually grab the, a couple. But there is something is else. We do have some packs that we're putting together now. We have the starter kits. This is the starter kit that we normally have, except it doesn't include um, the Wi-Fi module because, of course, you don't need that anymore. Um, it's built in. So that's great. So um, you do get a larger SD card. And you get a Pi 3, but you don't have to have external USB uh, Wi-Fi dongle. So that's kind of handy. And we have a couple of those packs as well if you want a all-in-one starter kit. Okay. So yeah. that is uh, your Yay. You did it. Yep. So it's kind of fun. We had a little bit of Feather, a little bit of NeoPixel, a little bit of Pi. 